Oh, I thought this was really funny. So, obviously off the back of what's happened, you know, I kind of feel a little bit sorry for him. And sometimes I don't because I think if you're the person that's like, um, I kind of get the feeling like, you know, usually if you're if you're a social justice warrior agent, if you're a social justice warrior in general, there has to come a point where you kind of realize that the harder you go in the paint of, about other people, the harder you start to kind of you know, fly that banner of council culture and start pointing fingers at people doing something wrong. You have to have something in the back of your head that tells you you're going to be next on the line. It has to occur to you. It probably won't happen. The, and the funny thing is, the likelihood is, you probably won't get attacked by people that you deem to be on the right. It's probably going to be people within your own little clique that are going to say, oh, you didn't use the right term. or oh, you don't have the right point of view in this matter. Oh, there's going to be something that happens along those kind of ways. Or you just might put your foot in your mouth, right? You might just say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing. And um, I think, obviously, Seth Trucks has suffered from that, right? With the whole, um, you know, sponsor, was it? With the whole donate um, to my tour manager's livelihood, right? By buying a, exclusive band camp mix which is still the legalities of that are just insane but big up him for trying anyway so he got caught up in this really preposterous really um ill-informed tone deaf uh request to the public for them to kind of buy these exclusive mixes that were submitted by you know all these really stellar names in the kind of electronic music space carl cox uh, robert the robert uh, martinez brothers uh seth Truxter, of course and then they put this little clip up online in terms of, you know, getting money for their tour managers and, you know, the internet went ablaze. Like, what the fuck? How dare you? Your tour managers, you know, fair enough. If you want money, which would still be, you know, a little bit tone deaf and disgusting to do, but your tour managers who are like, you know, four steps removed from anyone's, you know, purview when it comes to the Trinity music scene. He did it and it just kept on rumbling. And I guess from Seth Trucks' point of view or from the fans, I think because Seth is such a vocal proponent to, for calling out the bullshit in the industry it's kind of rich that he would do something so egregious right because you know for sure if somebody else did this that wasn't Seth and Seth saw it he would be going hard in the paint at them if somebody like a Steve Aoki did this who Seth Trucks admittedly hates his guts right imagine if somebody from that, that crew I don't know Swedish House Mafia all these kind of naff people that Seth Trucks doesn't like imagine if they would have done that how hard he would have gone at them so it's pretty funny and probably some some kind of sweet justice that he's getting it uh, in that in that respect from the fans isn't it? and again it's, for me it's kind of a bit sweet because i'm a big fan of his um especially when i first got into like listening to i don't know the tech housey deep housey sort of stuff he was my first kind of point of reference right jamie jones him um uh the whole vision quest crew um you know th th that was a real big moment in time right he really kind of helped to shape that sound and admittedly so was kind of well regarded in the scene he had some really big interviews was featured in what the top 10 for three years maybe or four years running really really great great guy and it all all for um by all you know by all intentions seems like a pretty cool dude was getting back to the scene did a pretty cool uh what's that smoky tells restaurant thing he popped up but yeah that video was a really big misstep and i just checked a video recently online randomly i saw a live stream that he did where he performed somewhere you know everyone's doing these little dj live streams which you know off just objectively from that the you know as a just looking at it they always look a bit sad they look a bit lonely right they don't have the same sort of vigor or vuj or juju they would have if you did them i don't know when everything was normal i think the fact that we're all locked indoors and people are trying to pretend like everything's fine by playing this amazing music indoors just makes you more sad really it makes it does for me anyway i just end up getting a bit more bummed out i'm not at a store it doesn't really have the same kind of effect that it would do for other people i'd guess in that regard so i saw this random mix of his uh, if anyone forget of course it's going to be for life you know questionable in that, respect, that, that kind of uh collaboration but you know, so it, it, it's a fairly typical, you know, setup. Him playing in a amazing swanky place somewhere. Um, I like the fact that he kind of made it a little bit more, you know, rustic looking by playing on top of a pair of, uh, put his turntables on top of a box, which I'm sure is more so to do with the stability of the needles and less so about the visual aspect of it. But I like that how he kind of, you know, pare down the backdrop of this amazing mansion by making it look like everyone everyone's teenage bedroom. I think that was pretty cool. So yeah, a pretty decent run of the mill uh, live stream from Seth Trucks, man. But if you scroll, let me just blow in front of it. If you scroll down to the comments, there's a funny thing in the comments, of course, right? So you hear him playing this amazing music in the background, really bloody going for it, right? And then you go to the comments, and what you see, you got first person here. Please give him money so that he can play his manager. Sorry, pay his manager. Um, and then another one being mean about his weight, I'm assuming here, says, hey, Seth, maybe love the cheese a bit. Another one here, 
man, I really enjoy your music, but knowing about your Tom Allen situation just ruined it. It's like getting off on the wrong terms with somebody, but you still feel like the coffee shop they work at. But you still like the coffee shop they work at. That's a really good one. Um, and another one here. Yo, man, I donated to your tour manager's mixtape and I didn't get that thank you email for support. It says here, it's always good to see someone using their own ability to mix. That's a good one. This is your needs more tour manager. So it's just constant, constant abuse. And I guess he's just going to continue getting that until the end of time, unfortunately, isn't it? Which is a real shame because, you know, he's one of our better DJs. He's one of the better DJs in the scene who also happens to be a huge celebrity who's really big. You know, it's a big ticket number, headliner act who happens to be a, technically one of the best DJs in the scene. Impeccable music taste, um, real love for the scene. He obviously comes from a good place when he, you know, talks about the things that are going wrong in it. But fuck me, man, what a big misstep. Like, what a real, real, real big faux pas in terms of getting involved in that whole tour manager situation, man. He really fucked up. And again, I think he could have been he could have been in it would have been better if he just would have come out and said hey i fucked up apologies that was really you know um uh that was really tone deaf of me i wasn't aware of, i wasn't really aware of the gravity of the situation and how it would be portrayed or how it'd be put together my intentions were to just you know support my my friend who was going through a tough situation but i understand this is not something that people want to see we've taken the post down and i'll endeavor to do better instead he didn't do that he tried to explain it away like rationalize why it was okay for him his tour manager to upload unlicensed music mixes or it just didn't sound correct his explanation about it he just went about it the wrong way and i guess maybe the fact that he is got his back up the wall you can get a little bit defensive and feel like you don't need to answer for yourself but in this situation you do man especially if you try to be the bastion of like save the scene and purity and artist integrity and shit when it comes to stuff like this you have to kind of you know be honest and say hey i fucked up i did a bad i did an oopsie please forgive me let's keep going because apart from this little blemish what else has Seth Fox have done that's been egregious nothing really he's been pretty faultless I think everyone backed him when he said he hates Steve Aoki everyone backed him when he went to what's that place um not Secret Garden Party. Why is that really naff festival everyone goes to in, Ber in Belgium with all the massive lights and shit? Everyone kind of backed him when he was like pulling faces, DJing behind that. No one really was saying anything, right? You still remember his fucking legendary interview where he's uh, he looks like he allegedly possibly could be ketted out of his face and he's rolling. Everyone loved all that shit, innit? Do you remember that one? Let's get it up here quickly. Da, 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 da. So yeah, he's a good dude, man. But he just, you know, mistakes happen online. I think you just have to be honest and just kind of fess up to it. But I think there is some pleasure to be gained from the people that don't like you when they see you make such a social faux pas. They're like, ah, see, he's not all pure, is he? He's not that kind of guy. Because I'm sure if anyone else in that kind of naff deep house crew that he probably hates as well said that, he would have went in on them. So, yeah, th this is the legendary D DJ Maggie. Do you remember this? Let's fast forward a little bit. <laughs> And my girlfriend's like, you know what, boy? I got you some short shorts oh, and a so fucking skinny back then, pant. And I was God like, you damn. know what? That's I, what we, I guess we all were, but God, you like a different person, isn't it? Top sliders. I still remember that time too. This is some sort of influence that you had on me during the time coming with DJing. That's when I started growing my moustache. Right? That's how much of an influence he had on us back in the day. And that was, what, 2010? Bloody hell, what an era. Was that original upload as well? Yeah, it should be the original upload, yeah. Um, that was 2010, and I remember how much of an influence he had on me. I, I I grew my moustache out, had like a little afro picky fro, more so than I have now at the moment. Like, ugh. That's what I'm all about right there. We in Miami, I got some new top sliders in mint green. <laughs> that was a thing Bam. too, remember that? Boat shoes. I, I just, I'm just a boat man, as you can tell. So, I Solid mean, outfit, though, isn't it? Solid in outfit for DJ appearance. Uh, fucking bats. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Troxel was early on the COVID, isn't it? Bats everywhere. <laughs> he's uh, whatever. I don't know what he's rolling on, but he's a fucking legend. Sorry. Legendary so, you know, interview, man. In so much charisma, man. DJ TV, uh, DJ Mag TV. I, I, I don't know. Call letters it's like W W K R W. This is DJ Mag TV. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, she was cool. I mean, I'm sorry for using propane. I don't know how this this works in the, the UK, but yeah, you know, just having a good time. I want to look like kind of like Florida 1970 retiree. Yeah. You know, it's like incognito, cognito. And you're, you're living in Berlin now. How do, how does Miami compare to Berlin? I mean, Berlin. It's funny, yeah. So. um you, you couldn't get a more opposite version of a Berlin outfit, could you? That couldn't be more opposite of what a Berlin outfit looks like. If you ever, even during that, even during the two thousands era, two thousand ten era, no one was wearing like top sliders and short shorts to fucking Bergheim. It's the complete opposite. That's what I like. Yeah, he's such a free spirit in that regard. He has, he he wasn't infected with the you know the deep V, the black deep V with the you know Boris Badge Badgin, whatever his name is, uh, drop cotch trousers and the silver assortment of rings and the really uh, post apocalyptic 
apocalyptic sort of like um, asymmetric tattoos and shit, right? He just was himself completely. I guess that's what got him some of the fans. Like, oh, it's like whatever for me right now. I'm actually uh, planning on moving to London. Cause I think uh, it's the hottest, what, hottest place on the planet right now. It's cool. People are up for everything. Miami is really fun. It's like, ah, you see all your friends from Europe, but we're in Miami. You get out of like the European winter or whatever. But I mean, kind of in the end, like all the cool people are in London. I love so him, that's where I you love gotta him be. So much. I love him, man. It's a fun guy. Hopefully, he gets over this little tour manager hump thing. I'm sure when everything opens up again and he's playing in fucking IB, for everyone will fucking forget about it when he's fucking slayed it down at DC10, right? No one's gonna remember that he tried to raise money for his tour managers, and it'll be it'll be all forgotten. But god damn it, man! One little social faux pas, and everyone suddenly hates you.